So I'll, I'll kind of start from uh, left and we're kind of work our way to the right. Um, so you'll notice, you know, for any of you guys that have Blackbird, you'll notice that we've adopted the new Microsoft ribbon type of menu system, right? This is basically the, you know, the ribbon menu system that Microsoft Office uses, right? So, yeah, so this is Microsoft's new kind of um, menu system here. So, um, right, so like Blackbird, you know, Bloodhound has a main tab, you know, which, which basically this is your kind of file management, right? So you, you can open a file, save a file, clear out the template. You know, clearing is basically like unloading the template that you have loaded. So it's like unloading it, clears everything out so you can start from scratch start with a brand new template, you know, of course, the save as, you know, and of course, main would have undo, redo. Um, but also we have the notes uh, tab, right, which Bloodhound 1.0 also has this notes. It just wasn't called notes and it was really tucked away. But Bloodhound 1.0 has this notes section as well. This is more like a word processor. So you can copy and paste word documents in here you can copy and paste Excel, uh, copy and paste PDF uh, information in here. Not the PDF itself, but you can copy and paste the data out. You know, whatever you can copy out of a PDF, you can then paste it, you know, in here. So uh, I wonder if I have anything to paste. Oh, yeah, look at that. So, right, so I just pasted that solver that I copied. So if we go back to the logic board here, yeah, if you remember, I made a copy. I copied this solver and then pasted it right to make a yeah, to make a another a, another new solver. And so that copy data is still in the clipboard. And so I was able to paste it in the notes tab here. Um, anyways, let me uh, let me undo that. There we go. So it does take uh, some keyboard commands. So I just did a you know the typical Control Z to undo my uh, paste in the notes tab there. Let's see here. We have the snippets as well. So right and which is remember I I minimized this here. So if you want to bring up the snippets, you know you can click on that button and that'll bring it up or you know. Or um, see that'll close it and open it. All right, so yeah, the main tab is pretty pretty basic, pretty simple there. And keep in mind that when you're switching context, that it's um, Bloodhound's going to switch tabs here for you as well. So keep note of that. All right, so like um, since I have the notes tab selected. Right. It also brought up a notes tab. So there's your, your typical kind of word processor, you know, settings there. Yeah. So you can think of the notes tab like word pad, not Microsoft Word, but the word pad, the free one that comes with Windows. So it's not as elaborate as Word, um, but uh, it should have the, all the same functionality as word pad. All right, uh, let's see. So let me hide the notes. So again, on the main tab here, the the notes button toggles the notes tab on and it toggles it off. So you can see when I toggle the notes tab off, it uh, the menu automatically moved me back to the logic tab there because the logic tab is now what's selected, right? So let's open up, yeah. enable the notes tab again. And then if I click on the logic template, you can see it switches the menu to the logic tab there, or to the logic menu, right? So and if I click on the notes tab again, then it's gonna um, actually, look at that. No, no, it didn't switch me over to the notes, did it? All right. Well, yeah. You know, these are some of the little, little uh, uh, conveniences here that yeah we're still flushing out there. Let's see. Um, 
All right, so we covered everything on the main tab, so not much to it. So let me turn off that notes. All right, so now the logic tab, right? So this is definitely the primary tab that you're going to be working with, right? As you're building systems and looking at your logic template, right? So logic template management, you can see on, on the left, you can make new logic templates, right? So in Bloodhound 1.0, all of these logic templates, right? They were drop down menus, right? Remember you had that central drop down menu and that's how you accessed all of these logic templates. So now they're all just, you know, strung out as tabs, obviously. So let's see, let me undo those. There. So, you know, obviously you can make new ones, you can rename, you can rename the name, you can copy, um, and you can delete logic templates as you need, as you see fit. And then we already kind of covered this, right? You've got the solvers, the function nodes, and the logic nodes there. So the chart, so the chart is how you add another time frame, right? So the chart that in Bloodhound version one, that was on the solvers tab. So if I click chart, um, that's going to over on the property inspector, right? That's going to um, give you the, or bring up the settings so that you can add another time frame or another data series. Um, I was hoping it was going to also bring up the solvers panel, uh, but I had the solvers panel hidden here. So let me pin it. Yeah. So when I hit that chart button, right, it added this one minute chart to my solvers tab. Uh, solve. Yeah. Solvers. Sorry. Panel. So yeah, this is the solvers panel. So different than a tab. Um, right. And so just like, you know, with Bloodhound version one, you know, this, this area on the right, this has been like, this has been given an official name now. So that way, you know, um, when you're communicating with support or you're communicating with other people, you know, you can now have a proper name, you know, and tell people, you know, we're, or refer to the property inspector panel. So whenever there's settings to be changed on something, those settings will show up in the property inspector panel here, right? So like if I click on the result node, right? The result node, you know, it has settings. You can either activate it, right? So if you have other logic templates, right? Only one of them can be activated at a time on the chart, right? So the, the, the drop down menu, you know, determines which one, which, which of these logic boards is active. You know, well, if you click on the, the result node, you can also activate it right here. And you can also write a little, you know, description here, you know, something like that. So that way you can write yourself notes on this, specific logic board All right that's where you can put notes for for each specific logic board or logic template uh, and of course there's some options here again this is nothing new bloodhound um, this was kind of tucked away in bloodhound version one you had to uh, uh, in bloodhound version one let's see actually it's yeah, let's pull up the documentation. There we go. So we want Bloodhound's interface. All right. So Bloodhound 1.0. Let's see if I could find it. There's file management, solvers tab. Here we go. The logic tab. Let's see if it's in this window. Yeah, there we go. Okay. Right. So the override confidence thresholds you know uh, you had this menu here for each 
logic template and remember the description so you had to open up you know you had to click on that little green triangle you clicked on that green triangle and it opened up the description um, and uh, that's right yeah so the override confidence that actually wasn't hidden in Bloodhound 1.0 those components now are you know you access those by selecting the result node let's see all right yeah so we were on the charts button here um, so again now yep, the chart button will add you know a bunch of different charts or data series you know as before so you can actually set a different instrument if you want uh, and of course set the bar type or the period you know that you want to set for this all right let me undo those time frames there I guess I did a whole bunch yeah let me just delete that manually there you go there and of course remember that whenever you you know add a different time frame or a chart that bloodhounds not going to be able to do any more calculations until you do a, a, a reload so and so let's close that out and let's reload the chart all right so the chart button um so all right further to the right undo redo buttons pretty self-explanatory um and then we also have copy, paste, and delete. Um, and it looks like cool. Um, I'm not sure if the back end is fully implemented. It sure looks like it, but um, there might be further work to do. But um, the copy, paste, and delete buttons, as you can see, only the paste is um, available right now. Um, and that means that in the Windows clipboard that there is node data, right? There's node information. Um, so and as I, let's see, where is the, yeah, let me pull up, yeah, let me pull up Notepad. Yeah, so if I paste in Notepad, yeah, right there, right? We can see we have Bloodhound clipboard data still right it's still in the Windows clipboard and so the paste button is enabled because there's valid information that can be pasted so all right um, so if I put, put a bunch of garbage in there and I'm going to copy that text and so now okay yeah so it's not it's not fully implemented okay so at some point the paste button will disable itself when there isn't valid data that could be pasted and so obviously the copy button nothing is selected to copy so um, right if I select the result node you can't copy a result node you know that that's a static um, object that you can't copy and paste. So when I select the result node, you'll notice the copy button is still disabled. Uh, if I select the OR node, now I can copy the OR node, right? So as long as I have something selected that's copyable, then the copy button will enable itself. Also, the delete button will enable itself as well, right? So if I s click off, Right, so now nothing is selected, right? The property inspector is empty. So obviously you can't copy nothing and you can't delete nothing. So those buttons are disabled. All right, this will probably be a, a, a new favorite that a lot of people have been waiting for and that's the add text to your logic board. So click add text. And so now you just drag um, a rectangle, right, on there. And so now you can, um, you know, um, so there you go. So now you can add 
notes to yourself. And let's see, I think there is some subtle things to adjust, but for the most part, you know, the Z order, um, right? This, this is behind stuff. So, so that way you can kind of circle around things, right? You can place it around things and make it real, you know, uh, to highlight certain sections of your, your logic. And of course we can, we can change the background color if you want, change the outline like so. There we go. Oh, I might have to grab that. There we go. All right. So simple enough, you know, this is just, this is a really basic object here. Um, you know, you can, you can adjust the font size, you know, so if you wanted small text, there you go. You know, if you wanted something really big, there you go like that. Um, and you can type in a number here. So these are just kind of some common font sizes, but of course you can type in whatever font size you want. So I could put in 100 if I wanted to, right? Make it really big. <laughs> so, um, so that's really all the, all this, all there is to this, you know, you can change some colors, font size and type in some text, right? That's all just plain text, no pictures, no nothing. Um, you know, nothing fancy like the notes tab, right? So the notes tab, um, is, is like WordPad. Whereas, you know, this is just here just to, um, help you, um, add some notation, uh, to the logic board there. So that was the text object there. Um, and so the snippets button will be next here. All right, so Albert's asking, well, Vita's asking, can you do italics? Um, let's see, no. Like I said, this is pretty simple. You know, maybe if you have an italic font, but, you know, this is not word processor capable, right? It's just, it's, yeah, designed to just be kind of simple. All right, Albert's asking, is there a trick to selecting it? Um, Let's see, let me click off. Yeah, um, I'm just clicking anywhere inside of it. So I'm just cl clicking inside of it there. Uh, but, you know, try, typically you're probably gonna wanna select it on the outer edge. And then if you wanna resize it, you know, you have to put the mouse exactly on the little nodes in, in the corners there. So once you grab a node in the corner, Right, you can see the cursor changes shape. Right, so if I want to move it around, you know, I would, I'm just clicking just inside of it, and that's how I can move it around. But if I want to resize it, then put your mouse right on that little grip node there, and that's how you can resize it. And then, of course, the red X is the delete button. So. Let's see, Vito's asking, is it possible to send those notes directly to support? Um, actually, yes, you can. Yeah, this this type of question was actually asked in last week's, you know, which is how can I send my trading buddy, you know, uh, a section of logic? You know, let's say, you know, I come up with some great new, you know, piece of logic here. Um, you know, maybe some type of filter or whatever, and you want to send that to your trading buddy. Um, so all you got to do is select what you want to copy. And you can see, right, that includes um, everything inside. So that includes the, the text node as well. And from, so once you have everything selected, click the add snippets button. I'll click add snippets. Um, and then let me switch over to the snippets library. And let's, let's see, it's not, it didn't add it. Uh oh, what happened here? All right, let's try, 
using this there we oh there we go it was there it just didn't pop up okay ah all right looks like i found another little um specific situation to address here so yeah you can see i've actually got two snippets now of the exact same snippet because uh, it didn't show up the first time so let me can i undo one of those no, yeah, you can't undo making snippets. So what you can do is you can select a snippet and hit the remove snippet or you can right click. Oh, no, you can't right click yet. Okay. So another little, um, you know, convenience. Yeah, another little convenience that we're going to add is being able to right click on a snippet and basically it's just going to provide you the the four buttons here right so when you right click it'll give you access to these four buttons up so, but for now uh, right there's a button there that says remove snippet so you can click on that remove the extra one there we go so this snippet you know can be emailed to support if you want so there we go so um, something like that, whatever, you know, you should definitely give it a better name than that. Um, but once you've got your snippet created and named, then you can click on the folder icon and there we go. And so once the, um, this is right, the file explorer, the windows file explorer, and you can see there, are the two files for that snippet right so there's an image file and then there's the actual data file so this XML is the data file that contains all the data of all of these nodes here so you can email this to us you know or maybe you only need to email the picture the image so if you double click on that image right Windows will open it up in the photo viewer thing you know and so you can send this email this to anybody right so um, maybe that's all you need to send so there you go so there's those two files you can email to your friends you know or support or you know whoever um, you need to all right so Albert's mentioning so when, when you first create um, a note here or I'm sorry yeah when you first add text to your logic board right when you draw it on there um, it is selected so you can't yeah it's not selectable so it, it's just been created so it's kind of in this initialization state um, so to get it out of that initialization state actually what I recommend is as soon as you create it just start typing some text in there so that way you have some text in there and then click off yeah so click off of it after you put some text in there and then you can go in here and now manipulate it yeah so once you're past that initialization point then you can start manipulating the the notes or the text object sorry yeah good point there Albert um, all right cool so it looks like uh, all right so I got through all the little yeah side comments there so Let's see, we kind of touched upon the next button, which is the snippets. The snippets will just um, bring up the snippets tab. So if I have, um, so there you go. So I have the solvers tab up. And so you can see that the snippets is actually gone. The snippets is turned off. So the snippets button will, uh, as a little, tooltip you can see the tooltip there it says it toggles the snippets panel on and off so if I click on it again so now the snippets library panel is there and if we look at the bottom right I have the two tabs here so I have the solvers tab and I can switch to the snippets tab and then there you go so the next button right next to it is the add snippets button there and so you can see that it's disabled right now because there's nothing selected to turn into a snippet so you know to make a snippet you have to have something selected right so if I click on the or node 
now the add snippet is enabled and I can click on that and that'll add a snippet or there's another way that you can add a snippet so once you have something selected on the snippets panel there's the add snippets button right there on the far left or I think you can right click yep there you go so you can right click and save snippet as well so you know three different ways that you can make a snippet there <laughs> all right uh, the next one here let me get rid of this the next one um, so this is something yeah that's really kind of cool and um, I know we've gotten a, some requests for this in the past a few requests on this so it's nice that this is uh, here it's just a very simplistic convenience but the snap snapping so now you'll notice when you're moving nodes around right they'll snap in place and you can see it draws a line from the node that you're moving to the node nearest right and I can drag this down right and it snaps in place there or I can move it over and it right so the snapping snaps to the top of the node or the right edge of the node right so top or the right edge so it's on by default and you can turn it off so if I click the snapping then that turns it off and so now everything's free form here yeah and nothing um, right so now there's no snapping at all and then there's also um, alignment there's a, a two alignment so there's a line right and a line top so if let's see here yeah so if I select these four nodes right there you go those four nodes are selected and if I align right all right you can see it took all four nodes and aligned them to the right edge um, which you know I don't want to do but you know just to illustrate there you go all four nodes are aligned right uh, and the function nodes are actually behind the solver nodes so let's undo that so right so there you go so like um, probably a more practical example is you know let's say we have a bunch of nodes like this there all right so I have a bunch of solvers connected into a logic node and I want to quickly align them then I can just hit the align right button and there you go oh and also if you click one more time or is it double click sorry double click yeah so if you double click it you can see it evenly spaces it as well so I, I right align and then double clicking will evenly space them out so that way your logic board can look nice and pretty and professional so <laughs> all right um, so yeah so you can turn the the snapping on and off and let's see did I yeah okay the snapping is turned on again yep um, and of course just the align right line top so all right the next section is the zoom controls so if you somehow have a mouse button with no middle button then you can lock the pan on so you can see my icon turns into a little hand and I can pan around so that's really for people that don't have a middle mouse button right so but otherwise click your middle mouse button and that's how you can pan around and you know this basically this section is pretty self-explanatory right you can you have a slider so you can zoom in and out so again if your mouse has a scroll wheel then use your scroll wheel right is the scroll wheel on your mouse zooms in and zooms out but um, if your mouse doesn't have a scroll wheel then you can use 
the slider here to zoom in and zoom out. Um, and then there's this the uh, center view, right? So click on that, and the center view has two two modes within it. So if nothing is selected, then center view will zoom you in or out to all the nodes. So let me scroll all the way out here. And we'll pan off to the side, right? And so I don't have anything selected. So if I hit center view, it's going to zoom in to all the nodes. Now if I zoom out, let's move over here. And oh, now if I select, let's so I have those bottom nodes selected. So now if I hit the center view, it zooms in to what I have selected, right? So you have to have two, two or more nodes to zoom in to those nodes, right? So if you only have one node selected, it's not gonna zoom into just that one node. All right, so with nothing selected, if I click the center view, then you can see it zooms out to all the nodes or zooms in to all the nodes yeah all right uh and now options so this um is another way to a secondary way to access um the confidence threshold override right so this is what i showed you if you click on the result node and then go to the options tab right here is the confidence threshold override right which is i think i still have that page up um yeah so in bloodhound version one right when um yeah it doesn't it doesn't have this shown here but the result node was selected yeah and that's how we that's how in bloodhound version one you got access to the confidence threshold override. So it was the result node was selected, but eh, it's not shown in this screenshot here. So again, um, this um, confidence threshold override, this is only for people that are using fuzzy logic. So otherwise you'll never need to touch it. Turn it all off. So if you're not using fuzzy logic, yeah, just don't touch it. So, all right, that completes well, no, there's one more thing. So there's the, the share button all the way over on the right. Although this is not functioning. I'm sorry. It is functioning, but there is definitely some um, improvements to be added to it. I think, if I remember right, I think the images that it creates, there's something weird, something different with the images that it creates or something like that. Um, but uh, the point of this um, share window here is that this will automatically take a screenshot of your logic board you know whatever you have selected so it'll take a screenshot of the you know logic board right it'll create an image for you it can also upload your bloodhound file as well so you can give somebody a link to your bloodhound file keep in mind this stuff is not private yeah this stuff is not private so if you have something, you know, that you want kept private, definitely don't use the Bloodhound file, you know, uploader. So, um, and a chart screenshot. So this will also take a screenshot of the chart as well. And then it'll, yeah, so let me just hit go. And there you go, um, right? It gives you text. Uh, and this was built for futures IO. Yeah. So this might work on other discussion boards. We're not sure, but you know, but this logic template image text that it generates was specifically built for futures IO and that discussion board. Yeah. That type of discussion board. So, all right, so now that concludes the logic tab menu here. So sticking on the left and moving our way to the right, right? So further down on the left, 
we have the solvers panel and the snippets panel. So these two panels are on top of each other, directly on top of each other. Uh, you can actually rip them out. Right, you can see I can rip it out here. Just like with Blackbird, right? You can rip all this stuff out. Um, there. Oop. There we go. Right, you can rip it out and put it anywhere you want. So if you have a bunch of monitors, you know, you could put your snippets library on a, another monitor or something like that. So you can see, right, they are the solvers panel and the snippet library panel are separated now. So if you want to see them both uh, together, uh, let's see if I do that. Yeah, there we go. So now they're side by side. So, um, yeah. so you just kind of have to play around with how the panel docking works. Right, so that's not our invention, so we don't have any documentation on how this docking panel works. This is just something, you know, this, uh, this is a part of Microsoft's programming language. So let's see, I think if I want to put them on top of each other again. Yeah, there we go. Okay, so now I have the snippets and the solvers panel on top of each other again so I can switch back and forth there um, again you can pin these panels so that they auto hide right so if I want to see the snippets library just hold your mouse over that tab and it'll slide out for you and then you can grab your snippet and drag it on wherever you want it to go. There we go, right there. And you can see, right, it's gonna auto hide again. So same thing with the solvers, hold your mouse down and then you can grab whatever solver you want and drag it on the board. And then it's gonna auto hide for you. All right, let's see, so that's the left edge, so moving on to the middle um, here. Let's make a new logic template. All right, so I have another logic template here. Let me just put something on here. There we go. Yeah, we had to kind of um, set some constraints with all these docking panels so that way, you know, things don't get lost. So. Obviously, you can imagine if you got logic templates separated out, floating all over the place, you know, it's it's hard to remember what belongs to what. So, all right, so there you go. So that's, that's locked in there now, but I should be able to, let's see. Oh, there we go. So you can see there's this middle control here. So if I put it on the bottom, now I can see two logic templates at the same time. There, right? So this is definitely handy when you have two logic templates, you know, of the same system, um, but you're making adjustments. And so you need to make adjustments to both. Yeah, that way you can see both at the same time there. Uh, let's see here. There is... Oh, okay. No. So there will be a way to restore the default work area, um, but that has all been removed for now because it's a lot more complicated than we thought it was going to be. So in the future, there will, there will be another section in here uh, called something like a workspace. I think that's the terminology that Microsoft uses um, or actually DevExpress uses for managing your logic templates in this area. They call it workspace. So um, yeah, right now it's just been removed um, because it's not working as intended.
but there will be a, a button that you can click to restore everything back to the default setting right and what I mean by that is like if I drag this back up here there we go so now I have the two tabs side by side right and this is the default uh, workspace um, layout the default layout and oh yeah so even this yeah this has been disabled as well so you can see the tooltip says show window list you know so that window list um i guess had some problems for now so but at some point yeah you click on this little down button here and it'll show you a list of all your logic templates um all right yeah so um again you know you can mix and match whether you want to see two or more templates at the same time or if you only want to see one at a time so again just grab the tab and you can move it around so if i put it in the middle right that's the same as aligning them all up as tabs so it's the same thing as with the solver and the snippets there. Pull that out. Let me pin this. Right. So the solver panel and the snippet panel, right, they're all sharing the same space, just like the logic templates. You know, these two logic templates are sharing the same space, and you just select which tab you want to see. So, right, so same with the snippets and the solvers, they're sharing the same space. So, and if you want to separate them, again, I did show this earlier, but if I wanted to separate them, right, I can use one of the side controls. So the middle control means that they're both sharing the same space and it provides the tabs on the bottom. But if you, if you drag one over to the top, bottom, you know, whatever. So yeah, let me drag the, this to the bottom. So there we go. So the solvers panel is on the bottom and my snippets panel is on the top now, right? So you can totally kind of customize how you want this to look. So yeah, who knows, something like this might be in my, I could see this being um, a fairly common way that people like to set up their um, their work area. Uh, unfortunately, you cannot save this setup, not yet, right? That's a part of the workspace um, menu button system that's been removed. Um, so uh, again, saving uh, these, um, these exact layouts um, again that's being worked on so it's proving to be more complicated than it should be so yeah so you can't save this stuff for now so you'll have to you know unfortunately recreate it every single time so put those back on top of each other all right and now finally all the way on the right the inspector um, panel here right so the property inspector um, is where you can go and change all the settings for anything that you select right so if I select the ant node right this is where all the properties and settings are that for changing that ant node so um, if you select a bunch of nodes Right, so I have all these nodes selected. Then, oh, that's interesting. <laughs> okay, uh, yeah, so this definitely, well, actually, no. Yeah, this is subject to change here. So you'll notice that these are all comparison solvers, right? So I have four comparison solvers selected. 
um, and input A, they all have the same settings for input A. Input B, uh, actually they should have all the same settings for input B as well, but you can see, yeah, that, you know, it says no indicator there. So for now, you know, this is, this will be adjusted to prevent accidents, but for now, you know, if you have a bunch of solvers selected at the same time, don't go and change the properties. All right. Don't change the properties. Really what this only, what this should be showing is properties that all the nodes have in common. Yeah. So actually, yeah, this might've been a mistake with the latest update. So in previous builds, only the output modifiers would show, right? So the output modifiers, those three buttons, those are common to all the nodes here. So the global properties that um, actually evaluate, yeah, the evaluate is actually common to all of them. Uh, let's see. Oh, no, I'm mistaken. I thought the end, no, it will be. Sorry, the AND node does not have a enable long, enable short um, behavior, but I think that's yeah another one of those little tweaks that we're going to do uh, for the logic nodes is give give each of these logic nodes the evaluate um, setting here for those. Um, so expect in the future that um, the input sections should disappear you know, the rules, uh, properties should disappear and you should only see the properties that all the nodes have in common. So, um, yeah, so when you're selecting a node, there are three tabs at the top, right? So the options tab, that's where the slider is, right? So um, yeah, the slider and a description for that specific node. So if you want to, you know, so if you have an AND node that's doing uh, a complex function, right, you can put a description in there for that AND node. You know, of course you can name this, you know, right, you can put a custom name, but of course you know, those names, you know, uh, can't be very long. You know, you don't want those names to be very long. So if you do need to put a proper description in there, you know, you can do that on the options tab. So, and then of course the help tab. So, and it's on the long short modifier. Let me double click on the end note again. There we go. Okay. Now, so click on the end node and there's the um, help document for the end node. Yeah, so that does it really. Um, oh, well, and again, everything is a panel in here. So even the property inspector is a panel. So you can unpin it and it will auto hide for you, right? So if you don't need to see the properties, so obviously, you know, if you hide that property inspector, you know, obviously you can't go and adjust any of the settings for a solver um, or a function node, right? So, but you can pop that back out and there's the property for it um, and pin it again. And of course you can always, you can uh, stretch and change the width of these panels. So. All right, and then lastly, working our way down to the bottom is the auto update button. You know, just like in Bloodhound version one, it's basically in the same spot. So nothing, um, nothing's changed there. So I don't see anything else. So I think we managed to get through it all. So um, owner, is asking, uh, can you move solvers to upper or lower board? Ah, uh, no, you can copy and paste, but you can't move them. 
Yeah, so what owner was asking about is if, you know, let's say we set up a dual, you know, display here. I think at some point we do want to do that, um, but I don't know. That just sounds too dangerous. Like people could, uh, you know, we I, I can guarantee that there's just going to be too many people accidentally dragging a node from from one um, logic template to another. So I don't think we'll enable drag and drop from one panel to another. Um, so for now, I mean, it's not like you're saving yourself much time. I mean, all you got to do is just um, copy and paste. And there you have it. And well, actually, yeah, before I move on, Note, yeah, pay attention that when I copied this, that um, it made duplicate, um, it made literal copies of the solvers, right? If you look at my solvers list here, I have four solvers, right? And so when I paste those on here, Right, you can see it added two more solvers with the number two. Right, because if you look here, let's see the um, there, zoom in there. And so these right, these are the, the top two solvers here, right? Without the numbers. You can see there's no numbers there. And it's basically the same two just duplicated there. And so when I pasted, whenever you paste, it does create duplicates, right? And so it created the number two nodes here. Yeah. So uh, there, we did discuss this, and I'm sure that we're going to implement this um, in the future where, let me undo that. Yeah, where you'll have the option to paste um, new nodes, right? Or paste um, the same instances of that. So if you want to create the exact same logic without creating duplicate solvers, you'll just have to... Um, you know, the way you can do that is you can you'll have to just build it from scratch. So go into the existing solvers, right? And you can add them to the board there, right? So I just basically I clicked, 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 and clicked. So I clicked four times and I can drag these out there we go there and then grab myself an and node like so and there we go so this actually hold on let me let me clean this up here well that was weird <laughs> I was trying to space these out evenly. There. There we go. Okay. Okay. So we can see that the solver name doesn't have a number two on the end. Right? So, so this group of nodes and this group of nodes are exactly identical because they're using these same two nodes, right? The two nodes here without a number on the name, right? There's no number. And we can see on the solver, there's no number. So these are exactly the same, right? They're just different instances of the same nodes, except for the end node. 
So, you know, logic nodes and function nodes, those are always new nodes. Um, yeah, only solvers can have a can have multiple instances of the same solver. All right. So that's what we're seeing is this one solver here. We're seeing multiple instances of it. So um, that would be this one, this node, and this node, this node, and this node. All four of those are the exact same solver. Just different instances. You know, visually, you know, we see four instances on the board. So they're only visual copies. They're not literal copies, but visual copies. So they're the same instance, right? So the copy is the one that has a number one in the name. So this is actually a copy of the other one. And so these copies, you can change any of the settings, right? And it's not going to affect the other one. So, but if I change one of the settings in this, if I change one of the settings in here, like if I change it from the high price to the open price, all instances of that node changed. So let me click on this one here, right? We can see there it changed to the open price. This one down here, it changed to the open price. If I select on the one on the solvers panel, right, it changed to the open price because they're all the same exact node. They're just visual copies of it. So they're the same instance. So, so let me put this back to the high price. There we go. Okay. All right. That looks like that's it for the questions so far. Um, yeah, as far as the interface, yeah, we covered it all.